hey, it's Don. Today we're going to talk about eBay's new update that they pushed out the notice for last night. Um, I was going to post this last night, but I wanted to mull this over. I got a ton of emails and comments and thoughts on this as well. So I wanted to add that all in here um, before I just rushed and pushed out a video. So we're going to go over the changes one by one, and we'll talk about the goods, the bads, and the uglies about any of these. So... Now, the first change here is an advancement to the seller's hub. It will actually allow you to send offers to potential buyers straight from the actual seller's hub. You can actually look at the watchers and you can go from there and then send some actual offers out to them. So it's a good option. If you've had items up for a long length of time and you've had a bunch of watchers and no movement whatsoever, it's a good thing to think about because a lot of the times when those items aren't selling, it's because of the price. I know other people say otherwise, but personally, if it's been up for a couple months, a year, two years, I don't see any sense in sitting it there. I don't care if it's another person who sells as well, buying it and they're making a profit. My bottom line and my bottom goal is to actually turn these items and make a profit on them. So if it's in my profit margin, I'm going to sell it either way, especially when it's been up for a couple of years. I don't like waiting five, 10 years for an item to sell. So that's just my take on it. The next one's another update to the seller hub. It's the ability to actually change your prices and such forth, actually edit items on your actual seller hub. Now, for those who do Amazon, you already know you can do that there very easily, all on the same page. I can change all the prices on one page and then just click the save and it automatically saves them all at once. So it's a good option. <laughs> The next one's the ability to download your, basically your outgoing packages, your actual orders for the day into an Excel CSV file, basically. It's a common delimited file that can be imported into Excel. It can also be imported or exported as a text file as well, if you're unaware. I love Excel, so for me, I pretty much import everything from eBay right now, all my sales reports and such forth, even from PayPal, into Excel, and that's literally why I do most of my paperwork anyway. So it's a good feature. Um, I literally print from eBay, so so it's not a huge concern to see those reports except at the end of the week when I make my balances. It does help you with taxes because it's going to show the exact tax that you actually paid if there's a report that you'll have to report that on later on in the year. So. <laughs> The next one is forcing all bin listings into a good tool cancel. Now, I think that's a bad decision for most people. Um, I ran a test that actually showed that if you ran them 30 days and you actually let them wait before you relisted, you know, so many days, it actually increased my sales. I did it, you know, quite a few times. It worked. I've got a link up here. It's void now because obviously that option is not going to be there, but it did work. Maybe it was just the fact that they were running tests on that and it, I just was able to see that something was different. Either way, it's a done deal. It's gone. The 30-day option for most people, though, they did use it. I used it as well. Sometimes I'll list something for 30 days and at the end of 30 days, I might decide what I want to do with it, whether it'd be worth cross-listing on other sites. And instead of having to remember or do anything else when it ended, then I would see it in my unsold items and I can adjust it then. Um, and a lot of people in the past, if they remember the June fiasco of last year when eBay lost a couple hundred thousand sellers' photos, it only happened to the Good Tool Canceled, not to the 30 days. So a lot of people switched from Good Tool Canceled to 30 days. I was actually in the process of switching many of my listings to 30 days, so it's kind of upsetting. And again, with the small sellers, a lot of the smaller sellers would only list certain items when they had free listings because eBay would constantly give them free listings. So they wouldn't relist it until they got free listings the next month. Now you're forced into it. So I don't think that's a good decision on that, um, in my opinion. I don't get free listings at all with Anchor Stores. I haven't received free listings in years that I can think of, other than in payback for them screwing everybody over with the photos last year in June. So I think it's a bad decision. I know that the point in thinking that they want to be so much like Amazon, 
you know, it's going to hurt some folks in all honesty. I can just move on, switch my stuff up, you know, and do it a different way. So, you know, I'll just adapt to it and move on. No complaints, I guess, at this point, because you got to do what you got to do. eBay still is the best platform to sell a majority of what we sell. For those who sell on Amazon like we do, there's just certain things you can't sell on Amazon. And your fallback, if you're gated in some areas, is always eBay. So I'm never going to want to give up eBay in that secondary market that I use for it. So give or take, you know, it's just uh, the way of the, the luck of the draw on this one here. Next one here is some inventory options and some selling options with the new other. Now I use the new other. I buy wholesale and sometimes it's wholesale returns or wholesale of the same item with some damage issues like a, a, a case or a pallet of material was damaged or the boxes are dented all in one pallet. Things like that show up. I do buy stuff like that. So for me, it's a good option. I, I can't see any, any downside for adding a new option like this to it in my personal opinion. I know there's a lot to do compared to Amazon to list an item on eBay. It's way less than it used to be. It's like a tenth of what it used to have to do to list an item on eBay. I know it's a lot easier to list stuff on, on Amazon. I, I know I wish eBay would fix some of that. I can just pull up my little scanner, click it on a book, boom, it's already got all the stuff in there for Amazon and I just set my price and shipping and I'm done. I mean, it's just a matter of moments. I can list a whole bunch of books on Amazon. So I get it. Um, but this is a decent option at least. So hopefully they're improving and streamlining the process in all these changes they're doing. I'm sure there's going to be some more major changes. I was told in England by several people that there's an option to list as many items as you want at a set price like $6.95 or something. I'm not sure how true or accurate that is. Several people have told me that. I've been hearing rumble that you know that could happen here on you know the U.S. site. Amazon, of course, for those who do sell in there as well, it's $39.99 for the business account. Then you can list whatever you want. No fees. You only pay the fees when the item sells. So... Anyway, that's just a touch on that. Next one is Terapeak. Now for me, I pretty much monitor and track all my items different ways in programs and, and other options that I already have or pay for through other services. So I don't need Terapeak. I know some people use it. It's fine. You know, no complaints if that's what they need or want. You know, so for me, I have no opinions on it really in the first place. I have a friend who paid for it when it was a paid service. I didn't see the need for it. He used it for certain things, so I can see some legist uh, use of it. But other than that, it's a mute point for me. Now, the next one is sales tax. I actually did a video on it just a week or two ago. I have a link right up here if you want to check it out where I address literally what they're talking about in here. Basically, the Supreme Court sided with the states now, and at this point, any state can collect sales tax from online sales, even if you don't have a nexus or a base or it didn't originate from their state. So it's just a way of them to collect on all these offlines because obviously retail has gone down in their state, so they are losing sales tax to online sellers. You don't have to pay sales tax. It's bad for most sellers. It really hurts some of the smaller sellers because it just adds a little more um, expense to a buyer trying to buy from a smaller seller who doesn't have the big margins that someone else has. Again, it's a law. Most of these laws will never be you know, canceled back out once they're instated. It'll just get worse. The only thing I can say is that the good part about this is, is that once my state is included on that list, I won't have to you know, submit and collect and remit sales tax to my state multiple times out of the year. So it'll alleviate some of my headache for the most part on that. So, But as I said, the 30-day one's really the only one of concerns for me. It does increase eBay's income. Um, in many cases, a lot of companies do the automatic renewal because they do collect more money that way. People will miss the deadline by an hour, 20 minutes a day and then it will already be billed for the next month and I'm sure eBay is going to have some stipulation that it says you can't get refunded for any difference on use and they won't prorate it. That's the standard practice for most companies. Either way they're going to get some more money out of it um, at the end of the day. Good, bad, or indifferent. Well, that's what I have for you today. Hopefully that gave you some ideas and some thoughts. If you enjoyed the video, please hit the like button down below. You can also hit the bell icon to be notified when I post new content or go live. Subscribe and tell a friend.